but at least it's still in focus. Is it in focus? I think so, yeah, I'm changing it. I mean... Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Heavy Wrecking. My name is John Sean Davidson, and I'm here once again in the lounge, not the office this time, because I'm doing an interview. An interview with Naz from Arcanum Plectra. Naz, welcome to Thank Heavy you. Repping. Thank you very much. Excellent. It is nice to have you here. It's good to be here. Zang. So, and the reason why Naz is here is because he makes Arcanum Plectra, which are these beautiful things up here. Uh, and I've been lucky enough to get a brand new one of them tonight, which I'll be writing about in due course. I'm very excited about that. Nice. You might have seen his stuff being mentioned on Players Pick Podcast by the wonderful Chris Johnson. Shout outs to Chris. Cheers, Chris. Uh, who's over at Nam with Kiesel at the moment. But he is not here. Nance is here, and we're going to talk a little bit about his origins and Arcanum and the rest of it. So, without further ado, let's go. Why did you start doing Arcanum Plectra? Um, because you sent me down the rabbit hole. <laughs> um, yeah, I started uh, experimenting with some of the picks that you lent me and found out that I really liked the sound of certain materials and um, it just kind of snowballed from there really. I got, I got to try and out how, how to shape them with my own tools and stuff I've got um, lying around at work and Yes, kind of went from there. So speaking of materials, um, I know that you've tried out stuff like Tagua uh, <laughs> in the past. We'll, we'll talk about the Tagua incident later on. But um, you're a big man for acrylic. Yes. Yeah. So why did you choose acrylic over other things? What's the history of that? Okay, so um, really it's, um, I mean, I've tried metal, uh, the aforementioned Tagua. Acrylic, um, it's easy to come by, it's easy to work, and I really like the sound of the critic picks. So it just kind of made sense, really. You said, talking about at work, um, we have a lot of people coming into the Plectroverse as Plectrees for different reasons, like carpenters coming in, or uh, guys that work with stone, or fabricators, or some are military engineers. Um, but you work in the health service I over do. here yeah. in the United Kingdom. Yes. Um, uh, specifically in orthotics, so um, we make um, corrective devices for people who have got kind of alignment problems with their feet or legs or spines. So um, I basically shape people's limbs um, to correct certain things that are wrong with them. And um, because I'm surrounded by like all these industrial tools and different materials like plastics and metals and stuff it kind of gave me a nice kind of base to start from and start kind of experimenting and i understand that the earliest stuff that you showed me some of which was like uhmwp and aluminium mm. and, and, and all that sort of stuff yeah you were cutting that on full size machinery yeah industrial just, size grinders and just crazy yeah <laughs> i mean you gotta remember people let's not let's not mess about here we're talking in we're talking in millimeters we're not talking in feet so it's to, to use machinery that size to cut stuff this small is is some bold activity it's kind of a bit overkill it is a little <laughs> like the old using dynamite to open a can of beans yeah job. um but that being said you settled on acrylic mm. And this particular shape that you've come up with, the Arcanum Wave, I guess yes, you would call it. the Arcanum Standard Shape. And so what drew you to that shape in particular? I, wanted, I knew I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, I'd been watching other people's uh, videos on how they make their picks, um, Brock especially. Shows the Brock Little of BHL. Yeah, man. Um, and and actually it was in his video, I watched him making a... I think it was like a Hodor or something like that. And um, he was answering a Q&A in real time on his live stream. And um, I think, I, I can't remember if someone asked him, um, I think someone asked him why he was so keen to share how he does it, I think. And he said, you know, um, I don't mind people, kind of new people coming into the, the Plectroverse, as you like to call it. 
Um, all glorious to the Plectroverse. All glorious to the Plectroverse. <laughs> um, but he said, as long as you know, you're not copying anyone and you're doing your own thing. So it was kind of I already wanted to do my own thing anyway, and then hearing him say that, I was like, well, yeah, you know, yeah, just makes sense. So. Yeah. After that, I just started sketching ideas out, and I just came up with something that, to my eye, looks quite aesthetically pleasing. Mm, I would agree. And uh, it has like the happy accident that the little uh, the little up flick really sits quite nicely in the crook of your finger. Yeah. So it kind of adds to uh, the stability a little bit. So from what I'd like to do now is if you can talk about your process from. Uh, getting the raw materials to the end product mm-hmm. and just give us a sort of blow by blow I'm going to run some footage over the top hopefully cool please nice right so I get my um, my sheet of acrylic um, I print out a sheet of templates that I've got on the sticky back plastic essentially uh, chuck that on the top cut them all out individually on a bandsaw then I use my combination um, desktop sander thing to um get it down to the, the lines essentially. Uh, I use my grinder to get in the, the kind of the little nooks and crannies. Uh, then I use a different part of the sander to get the bevel. Um, and then I uh, do all of this in my garden because I don't have an indoor workspace. Um, and then I go back indoors and uh, get the files out. I finish the bevel off by hand with the files and uh, varying grits of um, wet and dry. Um, Then after all the shaping is done, I get the acrylic polish out and I start buffing out all of the micro um, scoring and all that kind of thing. I get that all out of the bevels, um, shine it up really nicely and then um, then I put the grip on with another bit of sandpaper so and speaking of wet dry for those of you who are interested in getting into the game um, what grit are you going from and to as part of the process uh, so I've got I think I've got four four bits uh, ranging from two I think it's 240 320 400 and 600 and then um, and then it's after the 600, that's when I start using the acrylic polish and a cloth, essentially, to get all the scratches out. Wicked. Yes. It is all wicked. Handmade. All handmade. <laughs> all the time. Uh, now, on the subject of this, uh, obviously, Arcanum currently has the standard model in yeah. the range, and you do that in a series of colours. I wanted to ask you, because this is something you've spoken about online recently, mm. Uh, about your inspiration behind oh, yeah. the naming and everything, because I, yeah. I find this is it's quite a compelling part of it. So, um, please. Well, like, because I'm going back to the whole wanting to do my own thing, I, I just felt like I needed there to be just another aspect to it um, for, for keeping myself interested more than more than anything. Um, so yeah, I, I I'm a very keen player of. RPGs and D and D in particular, and things like that. So I'm quite a big fan of fantasy role playing games. Um, so I thought, you know, it would be cool to have a story behind each colour. Um, if if it looks like some kind of a gemstone, then I'll make up a story about having to go into a dangerous cave and finding these special gemstones, and then bringing them back to the the major's tower to be crafted into plectra of all nice. things. Yeah, not not you know wands or anything actually useful to a wizard. Plectra. Mm. So yeah, I like that <laughs> because it's cool to be into things. A big nerd. Comment section. <laughs> You've got the range as is now. Mm-hmm. It's acrylic. Yeah. Um, what have you have you got anything down the road for what you'd like to do with it in terms of shapes and sizes and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. So. Um, I mean, you mentioned uh, um, in, a, in one of our off-camera chats that, um, the possibility of a Jazz 3 kind of size and there is something in development for that, perhaps, soon. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have a, a smaller size than the standard. The standard is kind of equating to uh, Jazz 3, uh, Jazz Excel, sorry. 
So I do want to get a Jazz 3 for all the shredders out there, so that'll be available hopefully soon. Um, yeah, I'm just working on, a again, a, a unique shape for that, because I want it I want it to be Jazz 3 size, but I want it to very much be an Arcanum thing. Mm. So, yeah. Um, and materials-wise, I'm going to hopefully branch out into uh, maybe... Uh, thicker acrylic at some point because I'm running 3mm at the moment but I'm, I have been asked for thicker um, different materials I'm looking at experimenting with some bamboo just because it's more sustainable interesting yeah yeah. I don't know how that's going to work out it might need hardening or something I don't know yet but um, yeah, that may be a different pro I don't think anybody's doing from bamboo no and there might be a reason for that so uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very true yeah. that's very true um, um and yeah. Tagua, of course. Yeah. So, speaking of Tagua, Tagua, ladies and gentlemen, I've done a video on what Tagua is, and there's lots of guys out there using Holy Monkey, mm. Cross Custom, yeah. Sweeney, uh, Plex out in Italy as well. But would you like to tell, ladies and gentlemen, what happened when you tried to use Tagua the first time? Yes. I tried to cut some Tagua with a bandsaw, which is the wrong thing to do, I have now learned. Um, and uh, one nut has broken two bandsaw blades. Uh, and not only that, it uh, flung the tagwa nut at me um, quite disconcertingly with a large amount of force. So um, until I get my hands on a decent handsaw and a way of securing it so I can, I can cut it properly, um, I won't be venturing yeah. back into Tagwa at the moment, but yeah. I will do in the future. See, what you want to do is you want to do it Tim Yoder style and cut it on a lathe. Yes. I've seen guys cut it on a lathe. Yeah. Like cutting nuts that big with a well, you like need, wood turning. You need like, to, yeah, you need to put it on a lathe or something where you've got a nice big shield between you and the nut. Yeah. And uh, it's secured in a, a large machine. Um, now, just before we get to the, the close of play, I want to ask you, um, who who are the guys that you want to give a sort of hello to in terms of, because I know everybody takes the picks have a finite set of parameters mm -hmm. almost, yeah. in a sense. In a sense. Yeah. In a sense. <laughs> um, but who are the guys that know that you're in the game that have really, that you think are doing the good work. Yeah, man. Uh, so, obviously, uh, Brock, who I mentioned earlier on, from BHL, good man. Um, his stuff's awesome. Um, and he's uh, really free with his knowledge as well, which is it's nice. It gets people more involved and encourages uh, new makers. So, shout out to you. Uh, and also, um, Crow's Customs, um, like, the Tagwa one that you showed me was just amazing. You wait, you wait, see, <laughs> you see what's coming in the post. The yeah. best the I can't wait. Um, and uh, Cruz as well from Wooden Cast, um, top man. He makes he shows the Wooden Cast. Awesome stuff, dude. So yeah, carry on doing it, bro. Yeah, um, and also uh, Iron Age. Yep. Um, because partly um, it was also looking at some of the descriptions that he does for for his different uh, yeah. lines of picks that, in, that made me think, you know, maybe making up making up stories about where my stuff came from is quite a cool thing to do as well. Yeah, so well, Alexis does take his stuff very seriously, mm. so yeah, um, as good a place to cull inf inspiration from yeah, as it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, so obviously his um, inspirations behind, behind his picks are firmly rooted in actual reality and history and stuff so I think it's really really cool what he's doing. Those of you who want to know any more about Arcanum I've left the link down in the description. Uh, I'll be doing the proper write up on these uh, couple of different things actually. I'd like to do a from this to this yeah. thing with your permission yeah, which I'm getting on camera. Nice. And uh, <laughs> there'll be some more information coming up about that uh, up at heavyrepping.com so I'd like to say a big, big thanks to Nads from Arcanum for coming in. Thank you Thank for you coming sir. to the rep. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. So. Thanks. It's been a pleasure being here. And uh, I shall see you all very, very soon back here on Heavy Repping. In the meantime, my name is John Tron Davidson. This is 
heavy ripping and I shall see you soon. So just remember, if you're not sure what to do in life, rep hard and rep heavy. <laughs>